The battle and subsequent siege of Port Arthur saw the first military uses of barbed wire, bolt-action magazine rifles, rapid-firing light howitzers, Maxim machine guns, electric fences, arc lamps, searchlights, tactical radio signaling, and radio jamming, hand grenades, and trench warfare. Yeah. Also, this is part one, which will cover the battle and blockade of Port Arthur. Part two is going to be next week, and we'll cover the siege of Port Arthur. Trust me, this one's not that long, but the next one's going to be longer. That's why we split it up. We're going back to 1904, where Russia and Japan were both looking to expand their spheres of influence, and unfortunately, Korea and Manchuria fell into that fun Venn diagram area. Japan wanted it because they were looking to invade more into inland China, and Russia wanted it because they wanted a warm water port on the Pacific. And that there's where Port Arthur comes in. Russia had already built a railroad into the port, and when Japan wanted to negotiate who would be in control of what, Russia dragged their feet for as long as possible, all the while occupying new territory. So, not seeing a diplomatic solution, at about an hour and a half before midnight on February 8th, the Japanese Navy launched an unprovoked and preemptive attack meant to cripple the Russian fleet that was stationed in and around Port Arthur. Sound familiar? It was just after midnight, on the 9th when the torpedo attack began, but the Japanese fleet under Admiral Togo Hihachiro had some issues and weren't able to attack as a single force, diminishing the strength of their attack. Also, Russian torpedo nets helped out quite a bit as well. Out of 16 torpedoes fired, only three hit their targets and actually exploded, but two of those did cripple the two most powerful Russian ships, so it sort of worked out. Admiral Togo then went to one of his underlings, Dua Shigito, to serve the damage done to the Russian fleet. However, Dua didn't approach near enough. There was a mist obscuring his view as well, and he saw several ships damaged and the rest seemingly unorganized. So he reported back that the attack had been a complete success and it was time for a full attack to commence. Except, yeah, he was wrong. When the Japanese Navy came in to attack, they found the Russians ready and they were driven back by a combination of torpedoes, ships firing, as well as the onshore artillery. On the 11th, the Japanese began to mine the entrance to the harbor, though the ship dropping the mines, Yenisei, hit one and sank. When a ship was sent to investigate what exactly went down, yeah, they also hit one of their own mines and ended up sinking. It should also be noted that when the Yenisei went down, so did the only map of the mine locations, so the Japanese had no idea where their mines had been laid. And over the next few months, the Japanese would try to blockade the port using a combination of mines and scuttled ships, but the ships were mostly destroyed by the Russians and the attempts to keep the Russian fleet in the port continued. A new commander was sent for the Russians, Admiral Stepan Makarov, and he went on the offensive but was still unable to leave the cover of the artillery on shore. They did start laying their own mines though, and these would be an issue for the Japanese who lost multiple ships to them. However, Japanese mines were also taking a toll, including the loss of the Russian flagship Petropavlovsk with Admiral Makarov and 635 others going down with the ship. It should be noted that Admiral Togo did order all the flags on his ships to be lowered to half mass in respect for the loss of an enemy admiral. So the Japanese had failed to completely close off the port, but had done a good enough job for troops to begin landing in other parts of Manchuria. Japanese troops made quick work of the Korean defenders they ran into and took over much of Korea in short fashion. On April 30th, the Russian and Japanese troops finally met in a land battle, the Battle of Yalu River which the Japanese won, forcing the Russians to retreat. This was the first defeat of a European army by an Asian army in quite some time, and it showed everyone that the Japanese really meant business. They followed this battle with several more victories, pushing the remaining Russian forces into retreat and eventually into the safety of Port Arthur. Well, safe for the moment. <laughs> 